Do you remember this situation a couple of years ago in the subway, maybe? Kids sitting in the subway listening to music. And um, that can be quite annoying, but it's also very interesting because it's a guerrilla strategy, actually. It's the use of sound to claim space. That was, for me, very exciting and, and inspiring because I was producing electronic music and at the same time I was um, working on a series of wall drawings in different locations. And I used the music to inspire myself and to create a certain atmosphere in which I was able to bring these hypothetical landscapes into a real room. Um, the problem was my sound equipment was in the studio and I was traveling to different locations or, or public spaces, exhibition spaces, spaces to do the drawings. And I've built a um, device I called the Mobile Booster. It's a mobile sound system. It has my equipment in the back. It's kind of a hybrid of a car and a speaker and a production studio. And um, it was actually super functional. It totally worked. But it wasn't making me mobile. It was uh, too wide, so I couldn't get through a door. And it was too heavy to get up some stairs. So actually, uh, it was something like a conceptual thing. But in the internet, um, a lot of agencies came to me and, and asked if I want to bring this to mass production. And I was always telling them, you can try, but I'm telling you nobody will build a garage for his sound, for, for his sound system. And then so, yeah, it, um, they found out by themselves. <laughs> but then two years later, uh, someone wrote me an email from, from Spain and said, hey, Nick, I saw your work in the exhibition. I liked it, but now I saw a version running through a supermarket in Spain selling mobile phones with a MP3 package on it. And that was quite nasty because actually it was meant in, in the opposite way. I wanted to free space from industrial and commercial occupation. And um, yeah, I couldn't do anything against this um, illegal plagiarism because this company had too many lawyers. But I continued thinking about mobile sound systems. And um, I've built a model of a sound tank. Have a look to the video. I made a video with my brother Till Novak, like image film for this work. Sound tanks are they're, they're very small. They are models like this. They're remote controlled. And I produce uh, the soundtrack for every object. And I released a, a record at a label called Flipping the Coin. They release um, visual artists that are producing music. Um, I was continuing building sound systems and producing certain sound works for it. Um, 
like this one, it's called Tweeter. It's a high tone speaker with two bolts where you can stand in the middle and these bolts are producing a spherical wave which makes the sound experience super three-dimensional. And um, the frequency is around 3,000 hertz is where our ears are very sensitive. And this is an interesting thing because the, the pain level is lower than at the other frequencies. So you have to compose the, the sound work very carefully because if it's too loud, it's going to hurt. But if you do it right, it's pretty stimulative, like, uh, yeah, like doing acupuncture. It's like working with a needle at a very sensitive point. <laughs> and um, yeah, the next one is called Baron Bass. It's a subwoofer, actually. It's um, playing only f low frequencies from 20 to 200 hertz. And low frequency can make you fear and that it can produce panic. I'm already panicking here, I hope you're <laughs> pretty good subwoofers. Um, it has a it has a subwoofer in the middle of the bit between the both wheels and the center of the sculpture. And when the frequency is low around 20 hertz, you can't actually hear it, but you can feel it in your organs and it affects your brain. Um, after these experiments uh, with frequencies, I was ready to build the tank, the sound tank in real size. It's a one and a half tons track vehicle. Uh, you can lift up the sound wall and the front with a hydraulic system. And then you can play music through your, to your audience. And you can drive this vehicle, you can sit in the back. And I have my personal equipment again there. <laughs> some samplers and, and mixers, and uh, you can record sounds, sample sounds, and um, remix it and rearrange it. Um, have a look how it works. I was playing a couple of um, gigs uh, in Germany, and I was playing with my DJ collective Shock Latze. Uh, people that saw these performances weren't afraid of this tank, but people that just saw it in the internet, or some people, were contacting me and really worried that I invented a new weapon, and um, that we have to be afraid that the police are going to come at us in the future and uh, shoot at us with sound and makes our ears bleeding. And the good news is that I didn't invent a weapon like that because I lowered the frequencies at 3,000 hertz so that if the volume is very loud, it's not really uncomfortable, but um, I raised the frequency of 200 hertz so that you have a really good kick bass. Um, yeah, but the bad news is these weapons already exist. Um, this is the sound cannon that is in use. It's called LRAT long-range acoustic device, and it's a cannon that shoots 3,000 hertz sinus curves through people. It was used first uh, against pirates uh, at Somalia, or at the coast of Somalia, and um, now it is in use, actually, more or less, all around the world uh, against protesters. This is a photograph from Pittsburgh, uh, the G20 protests. Um, yeah, at the same time where the powers are using sound weapons to shoot at civilians, uh, they forbid the people that are protesting in, in New York at Wall Street to use microphones and amplifiers right now. Because the powers understood that, that sound is a very powerful weapon, and also we use this weapon or this tool every day. So they try to weaken the people by forbidding to use a microphone 
but the people found a very great way to make themselves heard. Please have a look at this video. my perspective, this weird anachronism where we are not allowed to use a microphone is a clear expression of the speechlessness of the system. I think we have to protect the status where we are free to speak and we have to l listen to each other because this is the base of all culture. Thank you.